fertilizers especially are most commonly applied especially in you know big ag as an as a synthetic version of what fungi naturally do essentially growing on rock or near rock releasing compounds phosphorus comes off becomes a water soluble form they channel that to their plant partner this kind of a simplified version when we extract phosphorus from the earth as humans that is to make a synthetic or artificial fertilizer they first strip all the vegetation off including the wetlands creeks ponds underground springs and even small rivers then they bring in the largest excavators in the world these things are so big they weigh eight million pounds first they dig the topsoil off but they don't just set it aside so they can put it back on top when they're done they simply drop it into the deep hole so what mother nature took thousands of years to build the minerals and nutrients in is now 50 feet down where no future tree roots will ever be able to reach it they separate the phosphate rock and mix it with sulfuric acid the acid digests the phosphate rock to make phosphoric acid the byproduct of this process is called phosphogypsum and for every one ton of fertilizer they create five tons of phosphogypsum this stuff is radioactive very acidic and there is so much of it there is no place to dispose of so they just pile it up and create mountains called phosphogypsum stacks Lots of building materials are made from gypsum like drywall, but the EPA has declared the gypsum from the Florida mines to be way too radioactive for anything to be made from it. Ten years ago, you might have heard of Chinese drywall causing health problems because it was so acidic. I'm only speculating, but my guess is that China's drywall was being made from gypsum from a phosphate mine. On top of the gypsum stacks, they make large ponds, and that's where they store the millions of gallons of toxic water that they create. The water starts out clean, but as they use it, it picks up the contaminants like mercury, chromium, uranium, arsenic, sulfuric acid, and lots of fluoride. Each time they use it, it gets stronger and stronger and more concentrated. This acidic water eats away at the gypsum stack and the limestone layer under it, and slowly leaches these chemicals into the ground. And every once in a while, a massive sinkhole will open up right under one of these ponds and drain all the water right into the Florida aquifer. Demand for change in hopes of saving the environment, it all stems from that toxic sinkhole in Polk County. I'm pissed off at the world because I don't know. This mother's frustration, like many in Mulberry, left in the dark about that toxic sinkhole nearby. We extract rock, put it through a pretty nasty multi-step industrial process using strong industrial acids to break down that rock, create a water soluble form of fertilizer, pour it on the plant or out into the fields. But so much of that following up on all the environmental waste and destruction that it took to get there, much of that fertilizer is ultimately either bound up in the soil and becomes unusable or might very well wash away to river deltas or out to the ocean. It's easy for me to sit back and say, okay, I can blame them because of the sinkhole, but I'm not worried about blame right now. I just want to know if my kid took a bath and, and poisoned water. For 42 miles, it was a complete dead zone. Every living creature in this beautiful river had been wiped out. The company just filed bankruptcy and the taxpayers were left with the cleanup. Meanwhile, Mosaic releasing this statement just about 30 minutes ago, saying in part, quote, shutting down one of Florida's most important industries would also put 4,000 of their neighbors out of work and jeopardize our work to help farmers throughout America grow the food we need. So this is a big, big topic, really. And the notion of peak phosphorus is tossed around something like other peak resources where we might be facing. And one way to potentially help mitigate and slow the effects of running out of phosphorus or big reserves of it is better utilizing natural organisms who are able to uh, more accurately dose out the amount of phosphorus that is needed. Fertilizers especially are most commonly applied, especially in you know big ag, as, an, as a synthetic version of what fungi naturally do. Essentially growing on rock or near rock, releasing compounds, phosphorus comes off, becomes a water-soluble form. They channel that to their plant partner, this kind of a simplified version.